So when will we all have enough gold and silver? I think that the only way to solve this is with math. Okay, so we're gonna talk about how much gold and silver a person really needs. This is a topic that I've covered before a few different ways, but we're gonna look at it from another angle today. And all I can ever really do is tell you how I approach it personally, but we're going to add some data and we're gonna add some math so that you can play along. I think that that makes this topic a lot more interesting. So when I first got started buying gold and silver, I always wondered how much I needed as if there was a set number that I could get to and then I'd be done, I'd move on to something else. Now, it's turned out to be a little bit different. It's turned out to be more like a case of, I need whatever I have plus a little bit more. And at some point though, it gets to be a question of how much is too much. And that version of the question, that's more complicated. If you want an easy answer there, you have too much if what you're buying is preventing you from covering other needs. So the reason I like this topic is that it shows the utility of precious metals and it leads to plans. We're answering a bunch of questions like, why would a person buy gold or silver in the first place? What can you do with it? How fast should you be buying? How much should you be buying? What should you be buying? All of those questions get answered. And I told you that I was gonna throw in some data and some math. Well, I'm also going to throw silver into the question and I'm gonna tell you why I see gold and silver differently, why I don't talk about silver much, and then we'll get into that actual data and show the math to help explain why I use the numbers that I do and then how you can determine your own. This is a little like answering how much savings you need for retirement and that's going to be different for everyone, but I still see a lot of those recommendations online for somewhere around a million dollars. That's based on average household income here in the US and that might be nowhere near what you need, but if you understand the data and the math that they use to get there, well, you can work out your own. So before we get to that, before we get to the math, we're gonna start with silver. That's actually what I did. I bought silver before I bought gold. It used to be a lot of fun to pick up American silver eagles. And I don't mind admitting that it was a little bit of a disaster plan for me. I'm not a doomer, but I liked Red Dawn as much as the next person. I'm talking about the original, of course, not the remake. So the idea of having those smaller increments like a one ounce silver eagle, that seemed to make sense for quick use in some kind of disaster. Power gets knocked offline in a storm or Russian paratroopers start floating out of the sky. Now, whatever the scenario, you'd have a hypothetical unit of exchange at the mom and pop convenience store if the normal transaction model was having issues, extended power outage, whatever the case, that's the idea. So I think that somewhere along the way, the fun of those eagles wore off a little bit, I guess, but they do still make sense. I just don't have many left. I used to think that it made sense to have, say, 100 ounces of silver. And I would have said 60 ounces of that should be in American silver eagles, but I personally got a little bit aggressive. I sold them all down during the silver squeezes. People were just willing to give so much for them, I think I got a little carried away. So today I have like 20 ASCs and then a few 10 ounce RCM bars. I do have some random silver coins as well, but nothing beats an eagle here. I don't care what anybody says. And I guess I just don't have what I just said would have made sense. Now mostly I got tired of silver and if you're into it, I'm not trying to rain on that parade. For me, I've just been focusing the contingency plan on bigger potential disasters. For me, this is not about apocalypse planning. I'm not doing this because I feel the economy is in flames, about to fall over a cliff, leaving us in the stone age again. My planning just looks at the low level bad guys, like a recession that could potentially cut my income or a health issue that I needed to take some time off for, or really any number of things that might last more than a few months. It could be a personal issue or it could be the whole economy. Maybe the whole world is on fire. Maybe it is falling over a cliff. I'm planning for the more likely issues, but the end result is the same. So if you put the two together, gold and silver, I do think that we can come to at least a guide for how much a person should have. So I'm gonna get that basic data out here in a moment. I'm gonna put the math out. We can't call this financial advice, but we can consider it practical. We're covering ourselves for practical needs and practical time frames: three months, minimum expenses, six months, one year, two years, whatever. Pretty straightforward. So the average household's monthly expenses, 
here in the United States today is somewhere in the $5,200 range. That is a current number. Now, when I first started planning around the idea of covering possible monthly expenses, I didn't think that it was likely that I would lose all of my income. And the average monthly expenses here in the U.S. at the time was a lot closer to $4,000. At least that's what I found. So in my head, I always thought of an ounce of gold as something that could subsidize lost income for a month. Again, not cover all the expenses, but get me through it. And I always thought that three months would give me enough time to figure out how to recover. So three ounces of gold, that was my first goal. That was my first backup fund. And then 100 ounces of silver, well, that was my short-term disaster fund. Now, if you wanted to cover the entire month of expenses over a specific length of time, you'd have to figure out what your expenses are. If it was $5,200 like the U.S. average, then you'd be looking at more like three ounces of gold if you consider today's prices. So that's a lot different. You can do that math pretty quickly. For me, selling gold requires a pretty big event. Now, I'd use cash savings for typical things, so I think of it more as subsidizing that tough stretch than I do fully covering an entire month of expenses. And like I said, at one point, I thought three ounces of gold and 100 ounces of silver took care of all of that. But over time, the number for gold has increased. Silver, for me, well, it stayed about the same. Now, as my expenses have increased, or at least as I have been paying more attention to it, I've switched my formula to two ounces of gold per month, and I felt like I should have a longer period of time covered. I've gone from three months to six to a year, and now I'm at two years. So two years, 24 months times two ounces, that's 48. I've rounded it to 50. But silver has really fallen out of that mix for me. I still like the idea of having that 100 ounces of silver, but where gold went from 3 to 6 to 24 to 50, silver is still more of that disaster metal for me. It's more of a tool that I'm unlikely to use. Now, I hear the idea of silver being used for barter. If you think that's realistic, I'm not going to try to talk you out of it. But for me, I think gold fits the backup fund idea a lot better. Now, if you look into how much money that you need saved for retirement, the people who are actually qualified to make a recommendation typically base it off of your current income in one way or another. I most recommend saving 12 times your pre-retirement salary, and that's assuming, I guess, that you don't slow down on your spending. Maybe that's accurate. Probably it's not. But you can then break that down to how much you need at certain ages. So that would be like having one times your income at 30, three times your income at 40, six times at 50, and nine times by 60. And then by the age of 67, which they use as the retirement age, you would want to have 12 times your salary saved up. Now, just to cite where I get that information from, Fidelity is one of them, but it comes from a lot of different retirement planners. I am definitely not one of them, but I think we can use that as a base. Now, back to the backup fund. If you don't burn through it, it effectively becomes part of your retirement savings. So if we use that 50 ounces that I mentioned as my backup goal, that's roughly $90,000 at today's prices. And if you use the average household income again, the average in the U.S. is right around $90,000. Well, you start to see some of those strange coincidences in our math. We'll come back to that, though. So $90,000 times 12 is $1,080,000. And if you see a recommendation that you should have a $1,000,000 in savings for retirement, well, that's where that number comes from. So just assume that you did not use your backup fund. And if you were to roll that into your retirement savings, all the gold and silver you had, and you had approximately 50 ounces of gold or a comparably valued mix of silver and gold, that would be roughly 8% of the savings needed to retire. That's if your income matched the $90,000 average here in the United States. And the math there was just the $1,080,000 versus the $90,000 value in gold. Now, personally, I think 8% is high. Some people think it's low, but using that figure and applying the financial advisor model of having enough savings for retirement, it works out like this as far as how much gold you should have. Now, you would wanna have four ounces of gold at age 30. You'd wanna have 12 ounces of gold at 40, 24 ounces of gold at age 50, 36 ounces of gold at age 60, and then 48 ounces of gold at age 67. Now the math there is just your income times 0.8, if you wanted 8%, divided by $1,800, which is what I'm using for the price of an ounce of gold, and then the multiplier for your age. It seems complicated, but it's not. I'm gonna add some of this into the description to make it a little bit easier. 
Now, I know that this is nerdy stuff, dropping math on the topic of gold and silver, but I do think it's interesting. The variables there that we were talking about, they're just your annual income, the percentage of savings that you want in gold, and then the general price of an ounce of gold. Now, I also think that it's pretty interesting how the savings calculator plays out at those various ages because that's something that we don't talk about a whole lot here. And it's bizarre that we actually get pretty close to the way that I was thinking about it in terms of covering months of expenses. The fact that they line up by retirement age makes me think that maybe it makes pretty good sense. It's like using that common core math and magically you come together with the same answer when you do math the normal way. As for having 8% of your savings in gold or 5% or 10%, I've personally never really agreed there. I see it as having more of a specific purpose than just being some percentage of my savings. I still like seeing those recommendations though. And I think that we can call it good there. I think if we take this any further, we get into advanced calculus territory, nobody wants that. So let us know in the comments how much gold and silver that you think a person should have, what percentage of savings if you agree with that idea, or just how you approach it in general, let us know. And while you're in the comments, be sure to hit the like button. If you found any of this interesting, make sure you're subscribed with notifications turned on if you want to see more on the topic. And if you're still here, thanks again for watching. I always appreciate your time. Take care.